Welcome to Opera Then and Now. I'm Hal France and thanks for joining me. Today we are in the music room at the Joslin Castle in Omaha, Nebraska. Here we're going to look and listen to Bluebeard's Castle, a one-hour, one-act opera by Hungarian composer Béla Bartók and libretto by Béla Balas. The two young Hungarians created this early psycho-thriller long before Hitchcock. It was completed in 1911 and premiered in 1918. Bartok and Balash brought this 17th century fable about a wife killer into the 20th century and the age of Freud. They wasted no time getting under the surface and probed the inner recesses of Duke Bluebeard and his new bride, Judith. The action begins as the couple arrives at Bluebeard's castle. The castle is given a voice with the very first 16 notes that make up the castle theme. With these notes, Bartok lays the foundation of the castle and the musical bones of his opera. The ancient Dorian mode brings us to this place where Judith will make her new home. It's a place of mystery and of great strange histories. As the great outer doors close, the music gives us the feeling of weight. The castle theme is turned upside down and transformed from whole notes to walking eighth notes gradually as Judith moves through the castle. As this theme moves through different tonalities, another musical theme comes in and it represents Judith's growing involvement with this place. Bartok journeys through different harmonies and slight changes in the harmony, and it's almost as if he's taking us through the mind of Bluebeard. We're going to spend a little time just quickly examining uh, this opera. Written by a French composer, Georges Bizet, who lived 1838 to 1875, a rather short life for a very, very talented and uh, extraordinary composer, only 36 years. When Bizet was writing Carmen for the Opera Comique in Paris, he worked with two writers, and they helped him adapt the novel by Prosper Mary May, titled Carmen, written in 1845, for the stage. Mayac and Alivet uh, created the play for the opera, or the libretto, the words that would be set to music by Bizet. By all accounts, these two writers with the very grand reputations were very nervous about this project. They had cold feet and they were constantly trying to rein in this composer to keep him from exploiting the scandalous nature of the opera and in particular the shocking, perhaps groundbreaking type of heroine that it had. A strong, beautiful, infamous gypsy woman conditioned by deprivation, poverty, racism, sexism, living outside on the fringe of society, but possessing great beauty and possessing animal instincts and magnetism and an iron will that made her very, very hard to miss. What this opera represents is really music used in storytelling at its absolutely highest and most 
um, effective way. And for this, I really say this opera represents the power of music in many ways. For example, music is used to do everything this story um, requires. Setting the table as we anticipate the start of the story in the first place that we encounter, the public square in Seville. girl from Don Jose's hometown arrives in the big city. You kind of feel that she's a little nervous. On stage, things happen that the people and the characters in the story anticipate, just like we are as an audience. And for this, Bizet creates a sense of expectancy. women come back to work. But how about Carmen? We wait a little bit into the opera before we get a glimpse of her. And uh, she's introduced not so much by her own self, but by the energy that certain people in the crowd uh, feel as they hope to see her. And there you hear that fade theme, but very fast. Incredible the way he uses it. The men are really not very subtle, and they're probably not very attractive. They kind of have their tongues hanging out here. They're dying to find out uh, if she's going to choose any of them, and I would say the chances are zip. Um, uh, but they go after it anyway. Tell us who you're going to love today. Well, okay, so now this is what you call in you know, Hollywood the great, the great entrance, in a way. And again, I'm sorry for that, but it is set up so beautifully that we finally now are going to hear this uh, powerful woman. And she's going to say, well, who am I going to love? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe I won't love anybody. simple little recit, and then the ultimate. Very interestingly, of course, that's a good tune, and that's a wonderful star turn, right? But that also is a perfect melding of everything that is at this opera. In a very short time, Carmen has told us, very importantly, what she thinks about love, which is the subject of the story, as in a way. And uh, what she thinks is that love is a, a bird that you cannot make it do anything. It's a wild bird. It's a wild creature. When you try to make it do something, it rejects you. And when you ignore it, it certainly suddenly surprises you. And that really, not only in a microcosm, is this wonderful little opening number, but it is, in a sense, Carmen and the story. Mm -hmm. 